Hello, kia ora, everyone. Uh, excited to share my story with you. So my story begins with my father. He was uh, chief of staff of the National Security Council for President Reagan. This is his birthday on Air Force One. Um, his claim to fame was bringing email to the White House. <laughs> Pretty incredible. Uh, my claim to fame was bringing fashion to the White House. <laughs> Let's just get a little closer look here. Notice the collar, notice the shorts. You can't even see the shoes here, but really an impressive outfit overall. So about 15 years after this photo was taken, I was home for spring break, and my dad said, oh, let's go out to lunch. Let's get some lunch, Nick. So got in the car, and we started driving across the river into Virginia. Started to get a little bit concerned as we headed towards a specific exit. And it turns out that my father had set up an interview for me with uh, three of his friends at the CIA. So on this very seal right here, we proceeded to have a father-son fight. I said, Dad, I don't want to be a spy. I want to be a teacher. And by the way, I'm going to New Zealand to study poetry and Maori education. And so he said in his angry voice, how will you make a living as a teacher, poet, person, whatever? And then sort of confusion set in. Uh, New Zealand, what is that all about? <laughs> sure enough, I turned down the CIA and I came to your beautiful country. <laughs> and I immersed myself in New Zealand poetry. Anybody know who wrote this poem right here? Any, any New Zealand poets in the house? This is an Alan Kurnow poem. Uh, one of my favorite poets here. We'll do an open space on New Zealand poetry for all you Kiwis later. Um, <laughs> and immersed myself in Maori education, one of my favorite movies here, Whale Rider. And I had a little bit of fun as well. This is me uh, falling down the mountain, uh, Mount Taranaki here. Uh, but I came back to Washington, D.C. several years later, and I couldn't find a job, and I started to wonder, was Dad right? <laughs> was my obscure knowledge of New Zealand poetry and Maori education making it hard for me to get a job in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> so I teamed up with a group of fellow nerds, and we were all really excited about the fact that 30% of the world had access to internet, 90% had access to mobile phones. Uh, but even more than that, we looked out across the world and we saw all these people working in uh, disaster, human rights, food, education, who were hungry for new types of skills. And generally, these folks don't have access to graduate schools, too expensive, and it's quite expensive to put also trainers on planes to go reach them. So we asked ourselves as a group, what about online learning? As a group, we took hundreds of courses. Khan Academy, Code Academy, Coursera, Udemy, Udacity, you name it, we took it. And we tried to build a better model for how online education could be done. So we got together practitioners with animators, educators, and programmers, and we built my company, TechChange. Ten years later, we've reached 100,000 folks in almost every country of the world, and we're one of the largest providers of e-learning for the social sector. Working with all kinds of phenomenal organizations, large and small, uh, in every corner of the world on things like responding to Ebola or climate change or refugee resettlement. So what is our special sauce? Well, uh, at the heart of our model is this idea that we want to co-create learning experience with our communities. And that means where others are trying to scale a lecture into something that's self-paced, we look at the workshop and we think, how do we get the workshop, all its interactivity and community, to scale? And that's what we call web shops. That's where we live. For us, that means a really robust training platform, great content, and really strong facilitation. We also believe that building relationships alongside skills is the key. Most of the time, you take an online course, you're getting better at skills. For us, it's about creating community in small groups like this. Um, we're also very keen to ensure that pedagogy shapes technology, not the other way around. Pedagogy meaning how we teach. Too often, it's the technology that determines it. So for us, that means creating our own platform to allow for that and doing really neat things. So this is a course we taught on blockchain for international development. I know there's some crypto enthusiasts in the house. And we gave everybody a wallet, a crypto wallet, and we used uh, a token called Star Lumens to actually exchange value between and among participants when they saw a comment they liked or they attended an event and so forth. So new ways of thinking about how we can engage people in courses. Data, data, data. Let the data drive decision making. Uh, for us, we are capturing data on everything that's happening inside of a course, and we're using that to inform uh, what content to show, how to connect people more intentionally, 
and we're getting really clever about actually mapping the social fabric of an online learning community and giving things like empathy scores to try and get at some of those soft skills that are so important. So uh, the last thing I'll mention here is that good online teaching really matters. We're working hard to actually train more digital teachers out there in the world today. Um, so why am I here? I'm here to reconnect with this incredible country, to learn from you all, and to find collaborators who are excited about the model for online learning that we bring uh, and, and, and hoping to build some of the best online courses the world has ever seen. And in case you're wondering, dear old dad, <laughs> tech change super student, has taken and completed eight courses. <laughs> He's also paid for them, which is important. <laughs> Entrepreneurs, I did not give any free courses. And he loves New Zealand. So... There you have it. Thank you all. Enjoy your coffee break. <laughs>